What is going on guys and welcome back to another video here on Loud and Proud. Hopefully guys are doing absolutely great. I wasn't going to film today because it's a Sunday and I was just kind of like going to take laid back and take it easy. But I still pretty much am. But I'm going to go check some trail camera pictures right now. And I just thought, you know what, maybe they want to see this and I've got my camera anyway so I can check the photos. Maybe they uh, maybe they want to see what we got on camera. So I'm actually in the six-speed Cummins right now. We still are waiting on a winner. We should have a winner here any day. Probably probably two or three more days, and we should have a winner announced from the third-party agency. But this thing is just, it's so fun. Here's a little update on the corn and beans that were planted. The beans are just completely overgrown with grass right here. The corn's growing fine, um, but it's definitely getting overgrown with stuff. And why we're not spraying it is because we're not trying to raise it as like a crop to harvest. We're just kind of letting it grow as something else that the deer can eat. But it's just a little bit of a bummer that uh, if this does get shaded out, this corn and beans planted could be like for complete waste. You know what I mean? What do you guys recommend? Is there anything that I can buy and just get like a backpack sprayer and walk around and spray something on there? If there is, what do you guys recommend to keep the weeds out of the corn and beans? Because these areas are not that big. If it was acres and acres, that's one thing, but they're not. Like that area over there's maybe like a half acre to a three quarter at the most and this over here is maybe like a three quarter acre spot and also they've been logging over here they're almost done logging uh the property what they've been doing is a select cut pretty much from the front of the property all the way to the back and uh just kind of going through and taking some of the biggest of the trees in the property and dragging them out for deer management reasons and just so that there can be another uh good harvest harvestable timber crop in the next 10 years and if you don't keep up with logging your biggest stuff every so many years what's going to happen is your big trees are just going to stay big trees and they're going to shade out all the young ones and they're never going to have a chance to mature therefore you're pretty much just wasting timber and you're wasting the resources that you could be taking advantage of and not to mention keeping your property regularly timbered over a course of every five to ten ish years is a very select cut it keeps new undergrowth for the deer the turkey the you know small game all that stuff here's the beans over here though in the corn and it's growing really good now there is a lot of grass in this as well but the beans are growing very nicely so i'm not i'm not too worried about it i think for the most part the beans are gonna outgrow the grass like they have we should be fine i mean it could grow into a little bit of an issue, but especially the corn back there. I mean, it's already four foot tall and I don't see any weeds in it hardly at all because everything's shaded out now, but that's where we're at with the corn and beans over here. This stuff looks way, way better. I don't know if the ground's just better draining. I'm guessing since it's a little bit more on an incline than over there, but growing much nicer. So I'm gonna check the trail camera over here up against this tree and then I'll show you guys what we got. So we checked camera number one and I'm obviously not gonna show you all the photos because, well, there was a, uh, a lot. Here's one. You've got a decent buck walking out there. Not, I mean, he's not a very, not a big, real big one. He's probably two year old. Uh, and you got a young little, little one here, first year, first set of antlers. And then you've got uh, two more back here, but I can't tell what they are exactly. I'm guessing since all these deer in this picture are bigger body, I'm guessing that those two are also bucks and they're all just part of the same bachelor group. Got another photo here. You've got two real young bucks here. Probably, this is probably their first full set of antlers. So they're probably both year old deer. Here's another photo. This is kind of a neat one. So you've got a young buck there and then you've got three fawns and I'm guessing that's the rear end of a doe right there because there's three fawns right here. And you got another photo here. And this is three young bucks. Well, for spot number two, I'm a little bit surprised. There really weren't that many photos on this one other than tons of does and fawns, which I'm guessing are a lot of the same does and fawns from the other spot. But we're never really gonna know because they all look the same. I mean, it's just a nice, small, hidden clover food plot. It's got some weeds growing in it now, but it goes this whole area over here. And I just planted this this year. I did a replant because it's been like five years and then I just replanted this whole strip going all the way back to the stand. And usually what we do is we hunt up on this far edge over here, kind of looking down into this plot because up on that river bank, you've got more elevation. So when you put a 20 foot stand up on that bank, in reality, you're like 30 foot above this level, which makes it really nice and it makes it really hard for the deer to catch your movement up there because you're so high up. That's pretty much it. Just thought I would share this little bit with you. Let me know what you guys are seeing on your trail camera. What is the biggest scoring deer? By the time he's done growing this summer, what's the biggest scoring deer you think you're gonna have on your camera? Oh man, this one good looking truck. I had to come out here and snap some photos with it while I was out here. I was like, man, this thing looks good. I'm not gonna have it much longer. I gotta get some pictures of it. Oh man, could be yours. Keep the faith. 
Nobody's been drawn yet. Good morning. Day two of the vlog. He's in a good mood. He just like nursed and so he's like happy as can be. When's the last time we went grocery shopping? It's been at least two weeks. It's been a while because since we had Marshall, people have been bringing us food and they've been bringing portions for like 10 people. So we've just been like reheating up food and eating leftovers for like a little while now. I don't know what that is. What is that? <laughs> you, you just stepped in it too. I don't know what it is. It might just be dirt. So but, you put it in the engine room? Well, it, it might not be dirt though. Sweet. Sweet. Tomorrow is your last day to enter to win that 2018 SRT Hellcat plus $5,000 cash. You do not have to keep the car. You can sell the car, you can drive it for a year, then sell the car, you can just Gift you can it take it straight to a dealer and trade it in. You can do whatever you want. I would not recommend trading in because they're not going to give you jack crap for it. That car, if you win it, I would not sell it for a penny under fifty thousand. Respectively, you could sell that car for fifty grand and somebody's going to feel like they get a decent deal on it. But anyways, if you want to enter to win it, tomorrow's your last day, so don't waste any time. Links in the description below. Every five dollars, twenty times the entries to win that car plus five thousand dollars cash. Maybe you don't want the car, but you could sell it and buy a really nice truck. Two hours later, so we got some groceries. Got our car practical adjustments. Baby's fed again, so he's nice and quiet. Picked up groceries and not walked through the grocery store with the baby. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Well, COVID's a a terrible parent. Yeah, COVID's a scam anyways, but we didn't we didn't walk to the store. Instead, we did contactless pickup just because I don't want to go through a store where everybody's like being the mask police. Since it's touchless pickup, this is what happens. So you're not allowed to sign your own name on the things and whatever else because they don't want they don't want any contact. Yet I'm sitting here and she's standing here at the glass with the window all the way down, literally like almost elbows resting on my car, talking to me with her mask only covering her mouth, not her nose. Because keep in mind, I'm not offended by it anyway. I'm not bothered by it. Reagan's not bothered by it because we know it's just a joke. But like, she's like sitting there and she's like, well, since it's touchless, I, I'm, I'm going to sign for you. And then I'll load it up in the back. So, you know, since it's touchless, she's going to grab the handle to open the trunk, click the button to close the trunk. And then when we go to get our groceries out, we grab the same handle. She's, And then we close it with the same button and we grab all the same bags that she was just touching. It, it's all dumb and it's all just a psychological joke because like even at Chick-fil-A, I was like, I feel so bad for all these employees that have to be putting up with this total nonsense and it's literally a scam to try to trick all the people in the nation into basically little by little taking your freedoms a little bit at a time to get a socialism that is literally where we are headed if we are not careful. I am not going to walk around with a freaking paper mask over my face to make you feel good because it's not going to help me and it's not going to help you. On a more fun note, we're going to go look at a truck here real quick, but on top of that, we're actually at the same parking lot where the Whistling Diesel meet was a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago now, and uh, I'm going to see still uh, quite a bit of carnage. So we are here. You can already see there's tire marks all over the place. These are just the little ones though. I want to see what the the main strip was. Yeah, you can see all the Bernies. <laughs> I did one right there. One of those are mine. I did a, a really nasty one right there. Pulling in. Look at all the marks. Oh my goodness. This is crazy. Yeah, it's none of it's cleaned up. I did a couple down there too. But man, there. I'm telling you, those people tore it up here. It was crazy. And luckily, it's just pavement and some rubber marks, but. I mean, it was fun, but no. If you guys are wondering, it's still, it's nothing got cleaned up. I'm sure it's kind of harder to do than it sounds like, but it's still, uh, it's still pretty, pretty well coated with some rubber. Well, we stopped by this lot to take a peek at a vehicular or two. And uh, here's the first one that got my attention that I wanted to take a look at. It's a 2014 Duramax. It's actually really clean. It's only got 50,000 miles on it. Really low mileage truck, deleted, tuned, all that jazz pretty sweet i like it not set on that one yet so we're gonna we're gonna look at a couple more and then i'll let you know what i'm thinking plot twist for today's video i was planning on getting the tires put on the hellcat however which by the way you guys are running out of time to enter to win that car tomorrow's your last full day i believe i was gonna get the tires put on that thing but they did not call me to get the tires put on. Therefore, we're gonna have to wait until tomorrow. They said that they should be here Monday, but they said it'll probably be Monday afternoon, so they might not be able to get them on Monday. It might be like Tuesday mornings. Hopefully tomorrow we can get them on 
so that Wednesday you can see the new tires on Hellcat. So what we're actually gonna be doing instead is meeting up with a local subscriber, somebody who watches the videos, but who also I saw at the truck meet, and I saw his truck and I said, if you guys remember this clip in the, in the video, I said, man, that regular cab looks just like our regular cab. Well, it's actually somebody that I used to go to school with back when I went to school, which I hardly went to public school at all. But back when I did go to public school, I knew who he was and he said, hey man, I saw your video, that's my truck. If you wanna do a video with it sometime, let me know, I'd gladly bring it by. So we're gonna meet him over at my parents' farm. We're gonna do a video of his truck and I think you guys are gonna like it. It's very similar to this one, but it is different. And I wanna show you that build and kinda of look at them side by side. I remember driving by and I'm like, man, that, that truck looks just, it's, it's almost like a spitting image of our truck, but uh, it is different. So we'll, we'll show you that here in just a sec. He beat me here. So we are here. I told them all that I was gonna have you over. I said you watched the videos. We used to go to school with each other a while. It's been a long time. It was elementary school. Yeah, when like I, six years ago. Yeah, a long time ago. And I told him that I saw this truck at the Whistling Diesel meet in my video. And he said, dude, that's my truck. I said, cool. Can I see it on a video? He said, no problem. Brought it over. We're just going to do a basic video and just show you what's done to his truck and maybe any potential plans coming up for it. Not completely stock, but pretty close. All it's got is a billet King Speed valve cover and a Mishimoto catch can. And then it has your basic EFI Live with Anarchy Tunes on a CSP4 switch, backed by a six-speed transmission just like his truck. So it does have a manual? Yes. Okay, cool, I did not know that. That's why everybody likes this truck. If it was just an automatic, they'd be like, yeah, it's just an SLT automatic. Because well, everybody's Here worried about Dodge transmissions. <laughs> More than likely this winter, it'll probably get torn down and get a second gen swap, probably a few other goodies, just see what kind of numbers we can make. As it sits right now, it made 495 and 1150 foot pounds on the dyno which isn't too bad for a relatively stock truck <laughs> on the front we have a new laramie grill laramie bumper with fog lights kept the factory headlights and just upgraded to very nice led bulbs the billet flight fab tow hooks to give it a little more bling up front compared to that right there which is just your standard Standard front tow hook. Really about it. It's pretty well stocked up front. Bilstein 5100s up front with a three inch level and 22 by 12 hostels with a 305 proxy. And the frame is polished and was painted. In all reality, easier to just leave it like that than do this because yeah. if you don't spray it with quick detailer immediately after you wash it, then it gets all foggy and cloudy. Got a five inch straight pipe to a seven inch tip, fifth gen paint match tail lights are fully functioning turn signals reverse lights brake lights they are paint matched what was that color you said it was again it is maximum steel metallic it is one of the most metallic -y colors that ram has to offer i was like man that's not a color you see very often like i don't see many in that color and people also are like i don't see many in that color like it looks black put my phone light on it and you can see all the green sparkle in it. Like if the sun hits it, it's green. It's emerald green as can be. Dodge and Mopar have the most amazing colors when it comes to car oh, companies yeah. out there because they just have the most vibrant and metallic -y. Also a lot of terrible colors that don't belong on vehicles. <laughs> Over the winter, this thing's gonna get tore down. Suspension's gonna get pulled out of it. It's gonna get a lot of flight fab parts. Now, I've yet to pick a powder coat color yet. It's gonna get set on jack stands. The suspension's coming out, coils and everything. Probably gonna get debadged, tinted it. It's got 15 over 15% and then I did 15% on the windshield. So it's pretty dark. I don't know what I'm gonna do interior wise. I kinda wanna do one of those Starlight headliners in it. Those are cool. That's the thing to do now. Yeah, everybody's got them. He's gonna start this thing up so you guys can hear what this truck could sound like if it was deleted in tune. But since you don't know his identity and you don't know where it got it done, we're okay with showing this one. was it there goes the truck and uh what do you guys think of that truck and what do you think he should do for powder coating under the truck i'm sure he's going to do a little bit of coal rolling just because that's just like you know that's it's just kind of like a standard thing to do when you've got a deleted and tuned truck and you're proud of it but what do you think he should do in terms of color comment down below what color you think he should go with to give him some ideas on what he wants to do
Hey, look at there. I'm <laughs> dumping smoke. This thing is freaking nuts. I hope you guys understand why I don't have this truck deleted and tuned though, because I don't know who's gonna win, and I don't know where the truck's gonna go, and I would hate to have a truck that is in a condition to where somebody, like, for some reason can't claim it because they can't drive it in their state. So we try to keep it emissions compliant so that you guys have a truck that you can drive wherever you are. And if you want to delete it, you can delete it, but, uh, if you can't have it deleted in your state, we want to make sure that it's emissions compliant for you. And let me know down in the comment section below, do you guys like regular cabs or do you guys not like regular cabs? Would you rather see more crew cabs on the channel or do you like regular cabs? Let me know down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this vlog, this little change up. Trying to mix it up, trying to keep a lot of different pieces moving that keeps you guys' attention and not just like one topic and then done. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Remember, if you want to enter to win this 20 SRT Hellcat plus $5,000 cash, you can keep it, sell it, trade it, do whatever you want with it, but your chances of winning this car are running out because guess what? The giveaway ends tomorrow at 11.59 p.m. So if you haven't done so yet, grab your entries, win that car. Thank you guys so much. I will catch you in the next video. Peace.